Hey y'all, I'm Michael Stuckey, and today we are in the tankering tool shed on Stuckey's Lantern Farm. We're gonna build a ramp pump with a gravity air feed for aeration uh, to circulate the water in the pond 24-7 as well as provide the fish and the growth of the pond to be a lot more prosperous and you know healthier for them and grow them bigger for well hell to eat uh please stay tuned and coming up we got the, the actual layout all the pieces what you're going to need and then we have the dry build we'll show you a picture of it and then we'll actually assemble it uh and then the following video will be install uh without the air feed and then with the air feed to show the difference um if everything goes right down the road, we might upgrade the air feed to be a Vortex air feed. Now, that's a little tricky. It's a little different, but it's quite simple to make, and it's only a few dollars in PVC fittings. You're going to love it. Stay tuned. Get right to the build in a second. Okay, so here we have the layout of the ramp pump. And that's all the fittings, pieces you're going to need. And... We'll go over them in a moment. I also have over here heavy duty clear PVC cement. I prefer to use that because it's more suitable for environment. You want your purple primer to clean your piping, your PVC. I prefer the liquid Teflon. Sorry for the age of the bottle, but it's still good. You can use tape Teflon. Uh, Tape Teflon will work for the threads just as well. Uh, I do prefer the liquid. It creates a more sealed bond. You're also going to need two pipe wrenches, also known as a monkey wrench. And now we have our build. So we're going to start at the water end. In the water, I have a poly pipe with an open end, and I use this uh, fiber styrofoam fiber foam uh, wrapped around the pipe I gotta still need to bind it tighter but this is a, a filter screen it blocks all the debris and garbage you still get some particles but it, it reduces your clean out from three four times a year to once a year and your poly pipe is hooked up by three-quarter coupler and that'll go into a shutoff valve with a nipple to a three-quarter union uh, then you have a nipple and another T and you're gonna come up from that T with a nipple going to your swing check valve now if you notice that arrow points down and I'll show you why inside you have if you can see it a bar a uh, plate bar and as the water comes in it pushes up and seals it and you push it down it releases the air and then it starts going up and down and it self primes and fills the line. Also, as you follow through, <laughs> excuse me, you have another one. Once again, notice the direction. So the flap actually comes here and stops it. From, or the flap's here and it stops it from back flowing, which forces it to build pressure in the rest of the line coming over, including your stack now from your second swing check valve you're going to come a nipple to a T up from the T you're going to go from a three-quarter nipple to three-quarter to two inch coupling uh, reducer from a two inch to a three inch reducer uh, there's technically an incisor but they call it a reducer and you're going to use a slip cup link and I use a three inch CPVC schedule 40 you see uh, where's it say three inch there it is three inch schedule 40 uh, and it's three foot long at the top of that you're gonna wanna put a slip to thread coupling with a threaded cap now the purpose of the threaded cap is so for easy clean out it saves time and it saves replacement cost uh, a lot of people use the solid caps, but I find, you know, 
in 10 years time you're throwing out and replacing anywhere between you know three and seven of these pressure stacks and you know that adds up with all these parts uh especially you know over time it's not a big deal but you know if you don't have it you really don't want to have to replace it it's easier just to dismantle it all unscrew it and clean it out put it all back together and you're going to come back down to the t and you're going to come over to a nipple and another t and come up and this is a three quarter to i believe one quarter reducer followed by a water gauge that reaches 200 pounds now or psi they have gauges that go from 60 psi all the way to 240 uh dry and or liquid gauges this is a dry gauge it goes to 200 psi and it costs about nine bucks and change over at your general hardware store you're going to come back down to the t to another three quarter nipple a 90 degree elbow three quarter nipple and then i use a three quarter to half inch reducer down to half inch with another union and then a bald valve to shut it off as well as a half inch hose adapter which goes out into your pond or your water tanks now this is a little bit more of a progressive design my original design was shaped as a z and efficient as it may be i believe this will have more uh more stability and sustainability now in a moment we're going to show you how to put it together uh or rather i mean it's laid out to put it together but we're going to do a, a speed ver segment of the assembly and then the next video will show you just how to everything gets connected at, down at the pond how it's primed started how it runs and once we got it up and running it's going good everything's right we're gonna shut it off and we're gonna add in this little device i made this is what i call an aeration end cap we'll hook this up to the garden hose now if you noticed i drilled a hole and it's on an angle 45 coming in and the hose the air hose comes up to about the tip of my thumbnail and it's cut on a 45 as well at the other end You'll notice that there is a hair drain cap for a bathtub. I put a slit in the base of it and slid the hose in it, which will float in the pond and allow your air hose to stay above water. Idealistically. Now, the point of this is gravity air feed. As the water comes in here and it travels through and pressurizes into the system, builds up and it comes down, as it goes down to your reducer it increases your pressure going out which is a good thing you want that especially for pond, pond rotation and circulation well at the end of the line in the middle of the pond where it's going to be boiling up you know almost like a fountain but underground uh hooking this up by principle should allow it to draw air in as the water is coming out through the top here it should be drawing air in by gravity suction feed and forcing air into the pond as well providing aeration with circulation we will soon find out stay tuned to the next video thank you well y'all i must apologize i used the video sunglasses to record the build and apparently the lens shifted in the frame and it didn't record the build so we're jumping fast forward here's the final build what it looks like on the right over here is where the water comes in and that's where the water goes out well there's the three foot stack your clean out cat and there's the main unit all right and when we go to put it in this is where we prime it that's where it holds pressure. That's your gauge showing the pressure. The water will come up to about here, about a third of the pipe, and the rest will be air, back pressure, 
which will feed down and we once the pressure is built up and levelized we open the valve and let the water slowly go out until it equalizes there she is and again I do apologize the bill was cut out however the next video will have the install prime and operation I thank you stay tuned